Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers, from the works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Parents, Part 4. From the Mother. Disciple. Sweet Mother, yesterday Mother saw the boy in wise family. Why, praise to Mother to guide the medical treatment of his son. He will implicitly do what mother says. Mother, if the parents could stop being anxious and somewhat nervous in their relation with the boy, it would very much help towards his recovery. Blessings. Disciple. X writes, People are advising me to take eggs and fish for improving my body. Please ask Mother if I can take fish. Mother. The doctor should decide about these things if it is a matter of health. Disciple. I am attracted by Mother, but at the same time I must think of my parents who have brought me up. I must pay back my debt to them. Please write something about this last sentence. Mother, I have nothing to say about it. Each one has to find his own direction. Once you have chosen to live for the divine, nothing else in the world should count. But so long as you have not taken the decision, you must find in yourself the direction you want to give to your life. You say that you could not bring up your children properly, because although you are well educated and cultured, you have no time to spare for them, and that your wife has time, but she is uneducated uncultured, good for nothing. Will you tell me who is responsible for her condition? For more than twenty-five years she has lived with you. What did you do in these twenty-five years to educate her or to give her your culture? Absolutely nothing. Even the idea did not occur to you. You never thought that even if you had given her one hour daily for her education, it would have made a big difference in twenty-five years. For you, she existed only as a machine to look after your comforts and produce your children. You could not take her into your confidence. You could not do anything for her improvement. But there you stand with all your vanity blaming her for being uneducated and uncultured. I hold you responsible for all her shortcomings. Mother, you want your children to do as you bid. What do you know of truth? You want to impose your will because you are stronger. That way a giant can catch hold of you and you will have to do whatever he says. It is a most difficult thing to bring up children. I have not seen many parents who can do the proper thing. What right have you to impose your will on the children? You who have brought them into the world without giving any serious thought to their problems or making the necessary preparations. Disciple Isn't it true, Mother, that a son is not obliged to serve his father? Mother Only one who has totally consecrated himself to the divine has the right to forsake his duty to his parents. There are many parents who, on the contrary, push their child to constant activity. 
When the child remains quiet, they imagine that he is ill. There are even parents who have the bad habit of making their child do household work at the expense of his rest and relaxation. Nothing is worse for a developing nervous system which cannot stand the strain of too continuous an effort or of an activity that is imposed upon it and not freely chosen. At the risk of going against many current ideas and ruffling many prejudices, I hold that it is not fair to demand service from a child, as if it were his duty to serve his parents. The contrary would be more true, and certainly it is natural that parents should serve their child, or at least take great care of him. It is only if a child chooses freely to work for his family, and does this work as play, that the thing is admissible, and even then one must be careful that it in no way diminishes the hours of rest that are absolutely indispensable for his body to function properly.